Hey everyone, and welcome to Artsy with Moat, where we turn trash into treasure. Well, for today, we're going to be making our very own plastic bottle squid. I don't know about you all, but squid are some of my favorite and most fascinating animals. Now today's craft is a little bit more advanced and requires a few more supplies than we normally do here, so I'll be telling you those as we go. So first thing you need, of course, is your water bottle, okay? And this part is going to be, we're going to turn it into what's called the mantle. So if you guys check out my preserved squid. Okay, let me get this out of the way. Okay, you'll see some of the things that we're going to add. Now, squid are some of the most important animals in our marine ecosystem. And we're going to we're going to be using the bot the water bottle to make this part of the body, which is called the mantle. A lot of people think it's the head, but it's not. It's where all of the internal organs are. The head is right here. They have really big eyes. They have eight arms that are covered in sucker discs and they have two long feeding tentacles. Up here they have two fins, they're really good swimmers and um, we're also going to be adding this, I don't know if you can really see it here, but they have special cells on top of their mantle called chromatophores that they use to change color and texture. So those are the things that we're going to be adding to our squid today. So first thing, let's take our bottle and let's make the head, okay? So what I have are some uh, packing peanuts. These are like those cornstarch um, packing peanuts. Um, the neat thing about all of these crafts with RC is you really can use whatever materials you have that, that would be suitable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna be using my hot glue gun today and I'm going to take these packing peanuts and I'm just going to glue them right around the mouth of the water bottle. So let's do that now. Now there are many, now please guys again ask uh, your parents permission before using the hot glue. Hot glue is such a funny, like, delicate thing, right? <laughs> Too much will burn the water, or burn the water bottle, melt it. But not enough and your stuff won't stick so okay so that's pretty good so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add the glue all the way around the water bottle the mouth of the water bottle all right add those packing peanuts to make the head now in the head of course is the brain of the squid now squid, especially the giant and the colossal squid, are considered the most intelligent of all of the invertebrates. And their brain, believe it or not, is a donut shape. It actually goes around their esophagus. They kind of always have food on the brain, I guess. Kind of like me. <laughs> okay. Now you can add as many as you want here. On my example I showed you earlier, I had a few more, but I think that'll do it for now. Okay. Now I'm going to add, let's see, what do we want to add next? Let's add the arms, okay? Now these arms, they have eight arms, um, and octopus also have eight arms, okay? Octopus actually don't have any tentacles, okay, and I'll tell you the difference. So the arms actually have uh, sucker discs located all the way down the arms. And so what I'm going to use today for my, for my arms are um, some pieces of bubble wrap that I have cut, okay? Up to you how long you'd like to make them. Just know that the two feeding tentacles are much longer, okay? So these are eight. I chose bubble wrap because it kind of looks like um, the sucker discs that are found on the, on the arms, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just put the glue inside of the mouth of the water bottle. Then I'm just going to kind of shove the, without burning myself, <laughs> shove the strips of bubble wrap just right in there. Okay, doesn't have to be perfect, just get them in there as best as you can without burning yourself. 
Okay. Now located right in the middle of these, these arms is what's called the beak, okay? And the beak is what a squid uses to eat. Okay, so a squid actually can't swallow prey whole or anything like that. They actually have to take pretty small bites of their food. And it's very similar to beak of a bird. Okay, one more, almost got our arms on there. Okay. I kind of just. All right. And if you want, what you can do is even them up a bit to make them all the same length. Okay. Trim them up a little bit. Okay. All right. So we've got our eight arms that have the sucker discs. And then I'm gonna put the beak right in the middle, okay? What I'm gonna get used to make the beak is our good old handy cardboard egg carton. Okay. And I'm just cutting a diamond shape. Okay, a diamond shape like this that I can then fold in half. Make my little beak, and I'm going to glue it right in the middle of those arms. Right in the middle, yes. <laughs> okay, now to add the feeding tentacles, you can use a wide variety of things. Like in my example here, I actually found these are those like cable flags that um, they put out in, in yards uh, to show where like a cable is and these were just like trash litter so I used those but for today I'm going to use some leftover pipe cleaners that I had another project for. Now the difference in the feeding tentacles and the arms is the feeding tentacles don't actually have those sucker discs all the way down. They only have sucker discs at the end. So what you could do is take a little bit of your bubble wrap and glue it to the end just to show that there are those sucker discs on the end. Okay. I think I originally had sucker discs on that example, but okay. Okay, so we got our two little feeding arms. And so what would happen is their prey would come around, whatever they wanted to eat, and they would throw out those feeding tentacles, bring it back in. Uh, those arms would grab a hold and then push the food up to the beak. Kind of reminds me of those like slap hand toys, if you've ever played with those. Okay, so this I'm going to kind of just stick on the sides. And honestly, I probably did not make my feeding tentacles long enough, but that's okay. You guys can make them a little bit longer. Okay, stick it right on the side. Okay. So, we've got our mantle. We've got our head, we've got our arms, okay? We've got our feeding tentacles, complete with sucker discs, okay? So now let's add some eyes. Now squid actually have really big eyes for their body, uh, for their body size. The giant squid has the largest eyes in the animal kingdom, okay? So you wanna make sure you give them a nice set of eyes. So I'm gonna use plastic bottle caps, and then I found a couple pennies lying around and I'm gonna use those as the pupils. So first thing I'm gonna do, okay, add the pennies here. Okay, so now I've got my um, pupils glued into my bottle caps. So I'm gonna just glue them kind of right on the sides of the 
the head that we've made. Okay. One side here. And one side here. Yes, he is coming around. Well, if I were you guys, I'd probably make the feeding tentacles a little longer. <laughs> okay, so he is getting there. Look at those eyes. We've got his beak in there so he can eat, he can swim. Now we're gonna add a unique feature um, that cephalopods, which are squid, octopus, and cuttlefish, have. And it's called their siphon, okay? So it's this special tube that kind of sticks out. Let's see if you can see it on my model here a little bit. It sticks out um, kind of underneath their mantle. And it, it's used for a wide variety of things. Um, it's where the ink, they shoot out the ink. Uh, one thing they can do, they can actually uh, suck in water through their mantle and then shoot it out of that um, siphon, almost like a jet propulsion. So we got to give them a siphon. So I'm going back to my um, egg cartons. I'm going to cut off one of the tops here. And they make perfect, si perfect siphons. Okay. I'm going to cut both ends. Make like a little tube. Okay. All right. And I'm going to put him kind of just right along the back there. Okay, got our siphon added. Okay, he's getting there. Now, a couple other things to add to the mantle. We're gonna add his fins, or her fins. <laughs> I'm gonna use a toilet paper roll. I'm gonna cut it right up the middle. Tell you what, toilet paper rolls and egg cartons are like a crafter's dream. I'm just going to kind of mm, cut just like a little C shape almost. I'm going to do one on the other side. I'll just trace it so they look the same. Alright, so now I have his fins. I'm going to just fold it. Okay, fold it like that. On both sides here. Okay, and then I'm going to glue them down to our mantle. Okay. Okay, so one up here. Hot glue on my thumb. <laughs> and for all these crafts, I just use the low temperature um, glue guns and they work fine. Okay, we've got our fins. All right, so our squiddy can swim, he can eat. He can see. The last thing we want to give him is his camouflage. To me, this is the coolest thing about cephalopods is the fact that they can camouflage to their environment. So not only can they change color, but they can change texture by manipulating special cells called chromatophores. Okay, so I just gathered a bunch of little recycled materials of various colors and textures to glue on. So I have some old sponges, I have some old felt, okay, and I'm just going to glue those just in random spots on my squid mantle. Give them a little color. Little texture. And one of the coolest experiences snorkeling I ever had was seeing a, 
an octopus that was camouflaged. It looked just like a bump on the coral until I got close and he changed back into an octopus. It was so cool. All right, you guys. Check him out. So we have our plastic water bottle squid complete with chromatophores and everything it needs to survive in the wild. Well, I hope you all have had fun doing this today. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Remember, if you do make a squid, post it and um, tag us, hashtag artsywithmoat. Hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time.